Welcome to Rashi, Parasha study, Parashat Harimut Kedoshin. There's a lot to choose when dealing with the Rashi on this week's parasha. I think there's a lot of fascinating ideas, but I'd like to focus on something that's very close to my heart. Rashi, in the discussion of mitzvah ola, which keep in mind means for the first three years of planting a tree, you cannot eat the fruits of that tree, on the fourth year, you have to take the fruits of that tree, eat it in Yerushalayim. And the Pasuk tells us in the Pasuk in front of us, Pasuk Kafei, Bashana Hamijit, in the fifth year, Tuchilut Piri. Oh, finally, you get to eat it after five years. And then the Torah adds, Lehosif Lechem Tivuatu, to add to the yield of the fruit of the tree. Ani Adonai Lechem, I should be God. And meaning, that if you follow the mitzvot for three years, don't eat it, and the fourth year, eat it in the bit of dash, and you do shalim, then on the fifth year, and going forward, you're going to get an extra yield. And Rashi says something fascinating. Rashi says, right, Rashi says, you're going to keep this mitzvah to yell, in order to get more fruit. And bizchara, the reward of the mitzvah is a berachani v'varech l'chem perut and niti'ot going forward. Okay, very nice. Comes to the Biyakiva, and he says a statement that is so important for us to know. Yeah, the Biyakiva omit. Dibera Torah k'neged Yitzhahara. The Torah here is speaking against the Yitzhahara, meaning the Yitzhahara is going to tell you one thing, and comes to Torah to give the counterclaim. What is the Yitzhahara telling you? Four years, I'm not going to get the fruits of the tree. What am I doing? No, no, it comes to counterclaim against the Yitzhahara and says, no, it's okay. You're not four years, you're not going to do anything because Hashem will give you the better hand going forward. You're going to end up net positive, even though you're starting off as a net negative for the first four years. Notice the way the Biyakiva puts it. He says, it's the Birat Torah Keneged Yitzhahara, which means as follows. It's not, and we'll prove it in a second from the next session, it's not an ideal that I have to tell you do the mitzvot in order to get the sahar. just that I'm nervous you're not going to do because you're going to be too tempted by Yitzhahara, so I have to counterbalance and add a Berachan there. But really, are you doing the mitzvot because of the Berachan? No. The beracha is only there, not because of the reward of the mitzvah, but to neutralize the Yitzhahara's potential claims. By the way, it's interesting. Not for our purposes, not considered rashi. But if you look throughout the Torah and things which have a monetary loss, you'll find a beracha. So for instance, in Mitzvah Shemitah Tzifat Devarim, and when it says, relinquish the loans, Hashem says, Hashem will bless you. Anytime there's a financial loss, comes the beracha to remind us, uh, it's okay, do it anyway, Hashem will take care of you. Now, and that's why she concludes, How do we know we're correct, though? That is not exactly a, a high-level thinking thing. The Torah might feel it necessary to do. It's not really what the Torah wants to do. Look at the next Rashi later on in the parasha on the pasuk be temli kedushim ki kadosh ani adonai be kadosh to me because I am kadosh. But deal it chem in ha'amim li I separated you from the nations to be mine. And essentially, what this pasuk means is the conclusion of all the different prohibitions of arayot, of forbidden relationships, and all the different prohibitions of amudah zara and black magic and stuff like that. Says the Bi Azad bin Aziyad, as she brings him down, a famous statement, How do we know? A person shouldn't say, should not say, oh, I don't want to eat hazir, I don't want to eat pig because it's disgusting. Or I don't care to wait kalim, I'm not interested in wake kalim, so big deal. A value but rather a person should say, if she I, I want to eat pig. I wonder where Sha'an is. There's a reason why you go boss, put Sha'an is in there. I don't know, maybe I have no idea. Right, but there's a there's a reason for these things. The, everybody eats Basar Hazir. It's good, it's not bad, right? But that's what a person should say. Ma'a say, but he continues, obviously. He says, Ma'a say, what can I do? 
my father in heaven is not letting me. And I'm going to refrain because he's not letting me. It's more important to me that relationship with my father in heaven than the physical enjoyment of the taste of Hazir or the, I don't know, the very enjoyment of wearing a Sha'adiz suit. Talmud Omar, Navdil et Chem, Mina Ha'amim Liyotli. Quotes the Pasuk, Adil et Chem, Mina Ha'amim Liyotli, Shteh Havdalat Chem, your separation, Mehem Lishmi, Li, for me. Separate from the Avidot, Kabil Alam Omochishma for the sake of God. Not because there's a calculus here, not because it makes sense, or, oh, it's not really worth it. I don't really care about pig and I don't want God to punish me. Okay. Or, oh, I'm going to do our mitzvah or la because Hashem's going to end up giving me a reward anyway. No, that's not the reason. We're not really trying to make calculus about what's more beneficial. It's not a, it's not a, a cost benefit analysis that we're making here, but rather it's for the ideal of something, the yodli, to be do it for the sake of Hashem. So even when the Torah has to go out of its way to give you a promise of a benacha, it's only yodli. And I mentioned this, I think this is important to draw out from Rashi, because we have to analyze and ask ourselves, how often do we sell religion in a way that is because of what you're getting out of it? And how often are we talking about keeping the mitzvot for the sake of Hashem? And I think this is something important. All too often, we preach, give staka, you'll get back more. Not to actually give because it's the right thing to give to the organization that's collecting sedaka. All too often, we'll sell Shabbat as a day that's good for you and your family life, as opposed to connection to God. And there's a cost to pay when we do this when we focus so much on the human benefit of the mitzvot, and we forget it's only and it's not the ideal, we lose out on the ultimate value of the mitzvot and where the mitzvot are really supposed to take us, whether it's in our connection with Borei Olam, and whether it's with focusing on giving staka for the right reasons in the right way for the right causes, even without the fanfare and so on and so forth. And I think that's something that's very important that she is coming to remind us in this week's parasha. And hopefully we take these lessons and we instill them in us about lihiyo li, not for the hosif lachem tevo'atu, and it's only yisara, we're striving for lihiyo li. Shetehe havdatachem ehem lishmi, for the sake of Hashem. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom.